All right, so this is a video I've wanted to do for a long time. This is a video about framing panels. I have tried to film this thing like probably six times and I just can't or I couldn't come up with a good way to articulate the importance of framing panels, right? Everyone might be saying, well, what the hell is a framing panel? You know, a framing panel is the guts of a cabinet. Like um, a lot of people like to build things out of plywood and um, you know, you build the base of your carcass out of plywood. You might build the top of your carcass out of plywood. You might have some plywood runners, things like that. Um, the framing panel is literally, it's, a, it's generally soft wood, sometimes hardwood, generally soft wood um, in uh, two to three inch thickness, right? Three quarters of an inch thick, three inches wide. And it frames all the way around us tug and groove construction and it will have some kind of a center panel, right? Um, that panel could be, you know, quarter inch Baltic birch, it could be quarter inch MDF, masonite. It will have some product that will slide within the dado on the frame itself. And then that will become the, the structure of the cabinet, right? That'll become the base panel. That will become, you know, your mid panels, your, it could be a, a horizontal panel, or excuse me, a vertical panel. It could be a horizontal panel. It could be any structure within the interior of a cabinet, okay? Now, one of the, uh, things that I've heard in the past. The reason that they did it that way was because they had wooden slides or they had slides, they didn't have ball bearing slides, they didn't have metal slides, soft glow slides, you know, these kind of things, undermount slides. Um, it, they were limited by the technology, you know, and I've heard that and I understand that point um, and that is a valid point. However, it's bullshit. It's not true. That is one big pile of shit. True, and the reason it's not true is because yes, it served the purpose of holding a slide, but what it does more than anything is it contributes to or promotes the integrity of the cabinet. It gives the cabinet strength. It gives the As furniture makers and cabinet makers, we know that um, a lot of the structure of a cabinet is the face frame, that's one, but the bulk of the strength of a cabinet is actually in the back, right? The back ties everything together, right? It keeps the cabinet from falling over, you know? We've all seen it, you know, a million times. You take a, a carcass, right? You got your top, you got your sides, you got your base. But anyway, if you go to the side of that cabinet and you lean on it, that cabinet will essentially fall over, right? It's just not that stout. Like without a face frame and without a back, um, the cabinet is not very strong, right? And in modern furniture, we see this everywhere. Anything you get from Ikea is made this way. Any low-end furniture that you get, any furniture that costs under, I would say, $2,000 is gonna utilize this kind of construction where you just have this little tiny piece of two or three inch material across the face to separate the drawers, right? You have that little piece of material there, and that's essentially supposed to, you know, shelf between the two drawer fronts, right? Or the doors or whatever. Um, and anyway, it's not a great way to make furniture. I understand why a lot of people do it. Um, a lot of people um, either A, don't have time. They don't have the uh, tools to make frame and panels. Um, they just don't know, you know, or they, you know, they go with what they've seen or what they've been told. And um, we need to... The importance of this video is to get people away from thinking that, okay? Now, if I take that same cabinet that has the top, the base, the sides, right? And we push on it from the side, it's going to fall over, okay? If I take that same cabinet and I make that with frame and panel construction, okay? You're gonna have a top, a bottom, sides, and then you're gonna have so many horizontal panels in between, as well as vertical panels, okay? Now you might say, yeah, but that takes a lot of extra work. It's like, Bingo! that's the point. And that's what this video is all about right? The video is all about the fact that yes, it does take extra time, right? But as furniture makers, if we are indeed going to be a community of furniture makers, we have to make furniture the way it was supposed to be made, right? You're not pushing the craft or the trade forward by making an inferior cabinet, okay? So instead of making that traditional frame and panel that would go inside of the cabinet to where now you're just making some little strip of material and then calling that craftsmanship, like you're lying to yourself, Game over, you're lying man. to the community, Game over. you know? So this video is about that. It's about making furniture the way it's supposed to be made, not the easy way, not the way you can use your little, you know, your little festal track saws and all this, you know, the stuff that we're seeing on the internet today. This is not about that. This is about making furniture the traditional way and making it correctly, you know? And I'll go to my grave talking about this because it frustrates me to see cabinet makers and furniture makers making furniture this way because it's not how furniture is supposed to be made. If you wanna make some cheap piece of crap, you know, that's gonna last you, 
you know, a year or two, and the minute you move it, it's just gonna fall apart. The joints are gonna spread, all these kind of things. Like, that's cool, do that. No issues there. But, purpose of this video is to show you what frame and panel construction is, why it's important to do, and what makes it vastly superior to how we make furniture these days. And the things that I'm seeing on YouTube are going to, I will highlight all the reasons why this way of building your carcasses is vastly superior than the way that we're seeing furniture being made on YouTube today. All right, so here I've got just a basic frame and panel, right? This is what we put on all our furniture that we make here at the Resplendent Crow. This is what you're gonna see in traditional furniture. This is what you're gonna see in high-end furniture, right? This is the guts of a cabinet, okay? Now, the important thing to understand about this is we have notches cut in here, right? And this is because this is where the legs go, right? This idea that furniture is just made of plywood and everything is squared off with a lot of right angles, like that's not true. Traditional furniture has legs. You'll have a front leg, and then you'll have a back leg, and we have notches cut out for all those things, right? Because this is how you make a strong cabinet, okay? Now, the, um, the construction, as you can see, is, in this case, it's poplar. We've got a poplar frame here, poplar frame. The joinery, the joinery is tongue and groove, okay? It's tongue and groove joinery. Um, you do it in all kinds of construction. It's, a, it's pretty much a fundamental of woodworking, is the tongue and groove, okay? Now, The raw stock to make this framing panel is basically two inch, you know. In areas where you need added strength, you would obviously make it thicker. We've got three inch here. We've got two inch on the back, we've got two inch on the sides, okay? Now the other component to this panel is the center panel, okay? The center panel is, in this case, MDF. And MDF is, is not a, a, a material that I generally support in most furniture making. However, in the framing panel, I think it's completely appropriate. Um, in super high-end pieces of furniture, I would recommend using a Baltic birch material, but for the purposes of most furniture, I think MDF is fine. It lasts a long time, um, as long as it doesn't get wet, and because I generally paint a lot of furniture, it also gets primed in the whole nine yards, so I don't worry about it one bit. Um, so anyway, this is the, um, the frame and panel. This is the core of every cabinet that we make. This is the core of every traditional piece of furniture. Your manufacturers like Henradon, Thomasville, American of Martinsville, you know, Mastercraft, um, Kindle, these, you know, legacy furniture companies, you know, Hickory Furniture, Century Furniture, they all utilize the exact same method. Drexel Furniture, Bassett Furniture, it is a timeless way to make furniture. So the um, funny thing about furniture making is everyone likes to think that, you know, it's just this constantly evolving thing, and, and honestly, it's not. It really isn't. I mean, joinery is joinery. Are there better uh, products, uh, excuse me, are there better materials? Are there better adhesives? Yeah, to a certain degree there are, but um, the fundamentals of joinery haven't changed. I don't give a shit who, who comes up with some amazing machine or some amazing technique. The fundamentals haven't changed for 500 years, you know? So anyway, um, this is the frame panel. All right, so for starters, we'll go ahead and look at this Drexel dress, dresser real quick, because I see a lot of people building dressers. And um, let's look at the interior components of what this dresser looks like. All right, so you can see the interior. Here's our frame and panel, just like what I was just showing you. The base is also a frame and panel, except with this particular frame and panel, they've added this decorative trim piece out here, right? So the frame and panel actually extends all the way out to the end of the cabinet where the trim piece is actually routed onto the framing panel. A lot of times you'll see the trim piece attached to the framing panel, okay? Same deal here. This trim piece has already been attached, or excuse me, this, this profile has already been added to this existing framing panel. So in the framing panel, if I pull these drawers out, you'll see that the frame panel will extend the entire cabinet. So it's one framing panel to go from one end all the way to the other end, right? And so there's one, two, three framing panels, okay? Now, in a lot of furniture, you'll also have a vertical panel. Sometimes it's a framing panel, a lot of times it's a piece of plywood or a piece of hardwood, okay? This cabinet actually uses cables. So which is, which is you see that a little bit, I don't see it a ton. Um, I think I see that a little bit more as the furniture um, becomes more modern. That wasn't a, an old school technique, I think it was a technique that they picked up a little bit later on. Um, I don't know, maybe 70s, 80s, something like that. So anyway, you see a lot of that. So framing panels here, yes, there are wood slides here, right? 
but as I'll show you in some of the later pieces, the wood slides are, don't even apply uh, in, in the newer furniture. All right, now we're into this dresser, right? We got one, two, three, four, five, five drawer dresser. And I don't know who the manufacturer is of this. I'm sure we'll figure it out when we open it up, but it's a, just a basic HEPA white piece, very common, um, 40s, 50s, 60s. And anyway, let's look at how this piece of furniture is constructed. Okay, so we have all five drawers out. And again, we can see it's all frame and panel construction, every bit of it, right? Um, one of the great things about frame and panel construction is it keeps the weight of your cabinet down, right? So I did a test um, with a scale and I measured and I took, um, I wanna say it was, uh, it was a, basically a two or a three square foot frame and panel and then a, a two or three square foot piece of MDF, or of, of, um, I'm sorry, of, of plywood. And I weighed them out. And basically what it boils down to is a frame and panel is gonna be approximately two thirds the weight of a piece of plywood. Right, and while you can cut out a piece of plywood very quickly, you know, that's one of the great things about it and it's very stable, um, people don't associate plywood with quality, right? So if we're gonna make quality furniture, we need to make it the way the quality furniture is made, which is framing panels, okay? So anyway, um, so we have all these panels in here. These are all what look to me to be a form of poplar as well. This is poplar with some kind of a, a very thin, thin, this is almost veneer. I would say this is probably 16th of an inch thick. It's very thin. Um, anyway, one of the reasons that they would do this is because they didn't want your stuff to fall from drawer to drawer to drawer, right? So sometimes people call these dust covers, right? And so the purpose of this is if something were to fall out, it gets caught here, it does not fall into the other, to the other drawer. Okay, so that's kind of an important thing to remember. Now, to distinguish a quality piece of furniture from what I would call a piece of shit is normally what you'd see is you would just see this panel. That is one big pile of shit. All you're gonna get is this, and I see this all the time on YouTube and it absolutely drives me insane. It drives me insane, I cannot <laughs> say it enough. This is all you get is this little panel here, you know, and I know this is a serpentine piece, but generally, People just put this little tiny piece of material in here. It might be two or three inches, you know, they usually do like a pocket screw of some kind. Um, that is not how you make traditional furniture. That is not what this video is about. This video is about making quality furniture using framing panels, okay? So, this cabinet is a perfect example of why most furniture that people make today just falls apart. It's basically disposable furniture, right? So, Every one of these framing panels, right? So we got, we got our base framing panel, one, two, three, four, five, and then we got one up here as well. So there's six framing panels in this thing, okay? So before in the video, I used that analogy of you just have you know, basically a box and you push that box from the side, the thing is just gonna fall over, okay? And if you have a whole bunch of these little strips of material in here, right? Same deal, you go to push that cabinet over, it's, it's done, okay? Every one of these framing panels is an actual frame, okay? That is, dadoed into the side, right? It's dadoed into the side and it's attached with a mortise and a tenon into the leg, okay? This is a leg and on the back is also a leg, okay? A lot of people that make furniture today don't do that. They just have plywood, these little strips of material, so that cabinet falls over. If you take the back out of this cabinet, won't change a thing about it. You cannot push this cabinet over. That's why this cabinet will last 200, 300 years as opposed to the basic shit that we're putting out today, which might last two or three years at best, right? The minute you move it, it starts to fall apart. This stuff will last forever, you know, because it has frame and panel construction. And also another point, which I'm not gonna talk about too much, is all the triangle blocking. This is another sign of high quality furniture. You will see triangular blocking all over um, high grade furniture, especially older furniture. It's very common. You will also see it on drawer boxes. High quality drawer boxes should have blocking on them. So anyway, um, this is a great example of why I think that people that are producing furniture today and showing it on YouTube are doing a disservice to people, you know? And I know it's people's stories and they're talking about, this is what I made and that's great. You know, it's their journey on to becoming a, a good woodworker. But why make junk, you know? People need to teach this. The frame and panel is the cornerstone of a good piece of furniture. Basically, this cabinet has 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 dados in it, okay? There's 12 dados in this cabinet. Um, so you have to think about all that surface area, right? All that glue, all that surface area for that glue to attach to, you know? So again, when you go to push on this cabinet, you go to, this cabinet will not rack. You cannot tweak this cabinet. It is built like a tank, as they say, you know? And again, people might argue with me and say, well, not everyone wants to make furniture that way, you know? And I'm not talking about those people. I'm literally telling you how classic furniture is made, traditional furniture is made, high-end furniture is made, and I'm telling you, this is how you should make furniture if you want to get to that place. All right, so this is, uh, this is um, a uh, walnut sideboard that I built. Uh, wife gave me a picture of it, something she wanted. And uh, anyway, I made it for it. It's got these nice, you know, HD details on it. But um, anyway, I'm showing you this piece because this is something that, again, I, I made um, maybe a year ago, and it uses the same frame and panel construction, okay? Um, I didn't need to use any frame and panel construction on this thing, technically speaking, because you don't see anything, right? It's just basically drawer fronts and a carcass. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna take the drawers out of this thing and I'm gonna show you guys why I build things the way that I build them, right? Um, and again, it's the consistency of, it's the consistency of using the frame and panel construction in every piece of furniture that I build. Doesn't matter what it is, um, because the furniture needs to last a very long time. Um, the furniture needs to uh, the the furniture needs to meet the expectations of the client, and for our clients, they spend thousands and thousands of dollars on our pieces of furniture. So it's important that every piece is super high quality, and that the client um, feels like they're getting a good value for the money that they're spending. Okay, um, as the price of your furniture goes up, the quality needs to go up with it. Right? It's um, there's a certain expectation of what a customer wants to get when they pay a certain amount of money. Um, when you buy a Ferrari, um, you'll accept a certain amount of, of problems, but at the same time, it needs to sound, look, and operate like a Ferrari. You know, so same thing with our furniture. Our furniture is very expensive, and it needs to be what we say it is, which is um, a very exclusive piece of furniture, but also a very high quality piece of furniture. All right, so you can see on the inside of this piece that we have the frame and panel construction, just like I've been saying on every single piece. This piece has Baltic birch center panels, but again, also this is a poplar frame. So the frame is poplar, the center panel is Baltic birch. That's what we chose to use on this piece of furniture. So again, the fronts are behind or excuse me, um, again, the framing panel is behind the fronts. So you never even see the framing panel itself, but it is in here because it is structure. It makes the piece, piece of furniture last longer, it makes it more rigid, and is also a sign of quality. Um, anyone that knows anything about furniture will never deny that a piece of furniture that has framing panels in it versus something that's just essentially hollow and some drawer slides is not a better quality piece of furniture. So I'll go ahead and yank out. So pull out another drawer, or another set of drawers here, and same deal, framing panels. Now, on this particular cabinet, instead of having the framing panel run the entire span of the cabinet, I opted to build this thing differently. So this is one, two framing panels, and this is three, four framing panels, and then there'll be five and six framing panels on the other side, okay? Now, there's a vertical panel here. There's a vertical panel here, which goes all the way up, right? And these framing panels are dadoed in to this panel, right? This is dadoed in, basically have a quarter inch dado. Here we have a quarter inch dado as well, and those pieces come together, right, on this vertical mid panel. So that's how this piece of furniture is put together. But again, look at what you're getting. You're getting frame and panel construction, you're getting um, poplar woods, you're getting Baltic birches, sometimes MDFs. These are, again, when your customer pulls this, if a customer were to pull the drawers out, they would look on the inside of this thing, and the inside looks just as good as the outside from a quality standpoint. A craftsman opens this cabinet up. He may be able to you know, point some things out that don't look right or that are incorrect or were fixed or whatever, but on the whole, the craftsman's going to open this thing up and go like, oh, yeah, yeah, this thing is built correctly. And that's part of what you want when you're going to be a furniture maker. You, know, you need to assume or expect that someone's going to look at your work. They need to operate that way in everything that you build. 
everything that you deliver, you need to expect that your customer is going to scrutinize your work, right? Even though most of them don't, they will scrutinize your work. And any craftsman that looks at your furniture is also going to scrutinize your work. So you should build things accordingly. Now, the uh, last piece we're going to look at is we're going to look at this faux bamboo credenza uh, that I built. I also have a video for this particular piece of furniture. Uh, I also have videos on how to make all the drawer boxes and, and everything. But anyway, um, this piece of furniture is, is a work of art. It is, again, made in the traditional fashion. It is made with uh, traditional frame and panel construction. There is some more plywood on this cabinet, and I'll point that out. Um, and we put that plywood on there be for painting purposes. It makes it easier to paint, um, and it looks better uh, as a painted surface than if we did as a frame and panel. Um, so anyway, I'll yank the drawers out on this thing, we'll pull the doors open, and we'll get a good look on the inside of this piece. And again, this was probably made six months ago, and um, we sell, I don't know, we probably sell one of these a month. We don't sell that many of them. Um, but it's a beautiful piece of furniture, lots of um, beautiful faux bamboo details, and lots of artistry goes into this piece. These are hand-built here in St. Louis. And uh, yeah, very proud of these pieces. Um, I love making faux bamboo furniture. Part of making, um, part of making faux bamboo furniture is, is what started this business. Um, my wife sold furniture um, sold faux bamboo furniture for a long time before I came on board and actually started reproducing all of that furniture and making it in modern sizes. Um, so anyway, but we make it the same way that it was traditionally made, which is again, frame and panel construction. Uh, manufacturers like um, Henry Link, Thomasville, and um, uh, Bassett, excuse me, Dixie, uh, Dixie Aloha made, um, made this furniture uh, from about, uh, God, I want to say like the 60s to the 80s. I'm not 100% sure on it, but um, it was made for a long time. It's very popular. It's uh, very popular in the South. And again, we sell and make a ton of this stuff. So this cabinet also uses frame and panel construction, right? The We have a big three and a half inch piece along the front of this to help carry this load, or excuse me, to carry the span. You know, this is, um, you know, probably close to 40 inches. So anyway, we use a bigger piece of material to, to do that so that it doesn't sag over time, right? And depending on what you're doing, this uh, framing pad, you may want to make this out of a hardwood such as uh, maple or hickory, uh, a wood like that, that again, stays very straight um, over a long period of time. So anyway, that's what we have. Um, we also have big blocks here that our framing panels tie into. And again, this cabinet is gonna be one, two, three framing panels. And you can see the way that I do it is I take my trim piece and I actually glue my trim piece on to my framing panel. And the reason I'll, Couple reasons that I do that, but one of the reasons that I do it is because I get these things made, right? So it's because I make so much faux bamboo. Um, I have just big sticks of this stuff. Um, also, if you take two pieces of wood and you glue them together, that piece of wood is stronger over a span than if it was just one solid piece of wood. And that's because wood, or excuse me, it's because um, glue is harder than wood, right? It's just like if you break a piece of wood, you glue it back together, generally it's not gonna break along the joint that you glued up, generally speaking, because wood glue is, is in fact very hard. But what we're doing is we're creating a lamination there. When you create that lamination, you actually make it stronger than if you had just used one solid piece of wood. So anyway, that's, that's a, a design and engineering type, type um, discussion. Vertical panels of this cabinet are all plywood. So that's how we build this cabinet. And again, this cabinet is built to last a very long time. It's not meant to be a throwaway cabinet that you, you know, purchase, set in your home for a couple of years, and then when you move, you know, it falls apart because you're trying to you know, move it to your next house. This piece of furniture will last a very long time and it's um, of very high quality. So anyway. <laughs> So I hope you liked this video on framing panels. Um, I hope you got value out of it. I hope you learned something new. Um, I hope that 
you will take this knowledge and you will put it into your furniture and cabinets and you will make, uh, make some timeless pieces that will last a very long time. Um, I hope you will take these skills uh, forward and teach them to the people around you and, you know, and also challenge me. Go ahead and send in your comments, your um, questions, concerns, things like that. If you have a better technique, if, you're, if there are things that I missed or things that um, I didn't uh, talk about um, very clearly, you know, please let me know. Um, I'm always looking to learn new things. I'm always looking to give people new information and I'm always looking to kind of push the ball forward uh, for tradesmen, for specifically furniture makers, but also cabinet makers, other woodworkers. Um, this business here, the Resplendent Crow, we make hundreds of pieces a year. We sell thousands of pieces a year because we also sell vintage furniture. Um, and we're just always making things. We're always designing new furniture. We're always trying to push like I said, push the ball forward and create more interesting and um, high quality pieces of furniture for the next generation of people. So anyway, if you got value out of this, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And um, got new videos coming out. I'm building new things. I'll be showing new techniques. I have a, this series as part of my uh, Fundamentals of Furniture series, which I'm going to talk about the things in furniture that I don't think people talk enough about um, as far as uh, furniture making goes. And some of it's very elementary, other will be, other things will be more of an, of an advanced nature, but all these things are fundamentals of becoming a fantastic cabinet maker, uh, becoming a fantastic woodworker. So anyway, have a great one. I appreciate your time.